So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the weather briefing of uh, October. So this is uh, the AirMOS RGB image of uh, 6 UTC. And uh, you can see uh, here um, very, very interesting, uh, lots of situations that are very interesting. We have here at uh, uh, western parts of the Atlantic, the former tropical cyclone uh, Raphael, uh, which merged uh, with a strong cold front that came uh, from the uh, North America. It, its transition to extratropical cyclone occurs uh, this uh, past night. And in the next few days, uh, this, uh, it will be a powerful extratropical low pressure that will uh, stay here in the Atlantic. Over this area, we have some frontal clouds. We have uh, a very, a very deep and uh, sharp trough here with uh, cold air mass. You can see with these uh, bluish purple colors, uh, the air is um, colder. And also with uh, uh, some the cloudiness associated with the frontal system uh, all over uh, this western region uh, of Europe uh, towards um, Scandinavia. We also have a very uh, strong uh, southerly, uh, southerly flow over these uh, parts of Europe. And you can see here with uh, this uh, air uh, image, this greenish uh, uh, color here, that uh, uh, means that we are over some warm hair uh, over all these parts of the, the Europe. And in further east, we have an extensive high pressure, uh, all this region here, Eastern Europe, that is uh, building up across all this Central and Eastern Europe. And further east, we also have this low pressure system uh, already uh, in occluded, the occlusion phase, and with uh, some interesting um, dry uh, stratospheric air in the center. So here uh, I want to show you, this is a product from uh, NOAA. Uh, it's coming from uh, polar orbit sensors. Uh, you have uh, the names here some um, polar orbit uh, data of, of, uh, about total precipita precipitable water. And here is Iberia and uh, UK over here and Europe, Central Europe, Eastern Europe. I want to show you mainly uh, the total precipitable precipi precipitable water, sorry, uh, over uh, Raphael, associated to Raphael, you see these high values uh, of uh, TPW uh, over here. And they are uh, going further north, associated with this uh, cold front and uh, low pressure system uh, that is over here, uh, northeastern part of uh, USA. Uh, be careful, uh, I have here this uh, circle, be careful because this is polar orbit information. So uh, we have here some uh, periods, this uh, data uh, information we have here. So it's not uh, from 6 UTC, it's from a period between 21 and 6 UTC. This is very interesting, we had uh, in September, a situation uh, about um, related to Nadine, another uh, tropical storm uh, hurricane, and we have some uh, high values of uh, uh, total precipitable water that go further to UK and uh, further south to um, uh, south of Spain, and we have some impacts over there last September. So it's important to see how. Uh, the level of moisture that we have associated with the systems. Well, uh, the overview 
two of the uh, alarms over Europe. We have here, I put the main uh, problems that we will we'll have uh, today in Europe, mainly rain, wind and uh, waves over Iberia, some wind over Central Europe and uh, fog over here uh, and some uh, related with snow and sleet uh, issues over here uh, in Finland. So we have a mix of uh, situations all over Europe. And of course we have this product from uh, severe weather from Mestofex uh, experiment and uh, the main issues is uh, the main issues is this area here with uh, excessive precipitation and it's ahead of the cold front and storms can uh, can form uh, and produce uh, uh, some uh, excessive precipitation. Also here, some wind gusts over this area, and uh, this uh, this air that's coming from south is very unstable. Over here, we have some uh, lightning um, uh, probability uh, associated with the cold air and stable uh, cold air mass and, and stable that is behind the cold front. So let's start uh, with some details. We we see that uh, there is lots of things to talk about today, but uh, I cannot. Uh, uh, talk about everything. So I start with, uh, well, I'm a forecaster, so uh, the first thing I do, I normally do, is checking the model performance. And we have here the simulated water vapor image from ECMWF model that is available in the ePort uh, website. And uh, you can see here uh, some dry uh, black areas uh, that could be um, dry uh, dry descending stratospheric air some other, another black areas that could be the the jet stream and some white uh, areas that is moisture so upper level moisture so let's see if uh, the real water vapor image uh, is more or less similar and you can see here, this is the water vapor uh, image at 6 UTC from uh, MSG. And you can see that mm, the main features, the main features, e the boundaries between moisture and dry that you can find here, uh, this uh, vortex uh, over here and here, so Eastern Europe, and of course this dry area, um, uh, this uh, stratospheric hair over here and also upper north, south of Greenland. So these are more or less uh, quite well represented in the uh, simulated image. You can see again uh, they are more or less um, similar. So let's continue. Again, with the uh, if, uh, air mass RGB, I'm going to focus uh, essentially uh, in this uh, area. <laughs> Western Iberia. I'm, uh, I'm going to focus uh, over this area and uh, a little bit over this uh, associated, the weather associated to uh, former tropical storm Raphael. And uh, I will talk uh, a little bit about the northern uh, systems uh, here um, and uh, some other um, nice features that uh, we can find here. So, as I told um, earlier, we have the deep, sharp trough at upper levels. We also have this uh, surface low over uh, UK and Ireland. And the, the cloudiness, the frontal clouds in this uh, region up to Scandinavia. So, we have a very uh, long uh, long frontal system uh, over all Western Europe and Northern Europe. 
So this area here over Iberia, I put here um, some fields. Uh, we still have uh, uh, RGB, uh, air mass RGB, and I have here the maximum winds at 300 hectopascal, and we can see uh, the jet that goes over here and over there, so there is somehow a bulge there, and I put also the thermal front parameter over here in blue lines, and it's this black black line, it's this cross section on the right, on your right side. So uh, you can see here that we have uh, the frontal, uh, thermal front parameter um, almost over crossing uh, Portugal and uh, you can see in this cross section um, this high, uh, these close lines, black lines here that are backwards. This area here is the co the cold front, and it's uh, backwards. Uh, that it means it's the cold front. It on the opposite of the warm front. That is forward. So this uh, close lines is uh, means that is stable. So the frontal zone is a stable one, and it's also the uh, very high gradient. So this is very intense warm f uh, cold front, and at surface you can see that more or less the the um, the frontal the cold front is over uh, thirty eight. You cannot see it very well, but thirty eight uh, north eight. West, so it's more or less over Lisbon. Uh, the cold front at 6 UTC um, is forecasting by this ECMWF, and in fact, it seems that we have uh, the cold front crossing Portugal uh, more or less over uh, Lisbon. Lisbon is not marked here, but you trust me, it's more or less in this area. Also, we have uh, the jet. Uh, in this area, so it's behind uh, uh, parallel to the frontal cloud band, so we have here a uh, cold front very uh, well uh, defined uh, in this uh, region. Behind we have uh, uh, this cold hair, uh, very unstable, so some enhanced cumulus over here. Some other fields to complement the, the other ones. So we have the um, positive vorticity advection at 300 and 500. You see this area with uh, put, uh, positive vort vorticity advection and also associated with the enhanced cumulus, which is uh, what we were expecting. Not very well in defined in this area, but here uh, a little bit north. Uh, the values of uh, positive vorticity advection are uh, associated with the, uh, the cells uh, that represent enhanced cumulus. Of course, and also the t uh, temperature advection uh, at 700 and the equivalent thickness uh, telling us more or less where is the cold front in this uh, region. And here we, I um, want to show you this uh, radar image uh, from Portuguese uh, radar, radar, and we have this maximum here, and uh, to show that uh, in fact the cold front uh, was uh, over Lisbon um, at uh, six UTC. So let's go further east and to see the uh, the extensive high pressure uh, over uh, all this eastern and central Europe uh, with no clouds, more or less uh, cloud-free. We have here at 3 UTC, we see some uh, fog patches and we had um, some f uh, warnings of fog uh, I, I show you in the previous slides. And we have here, in fact, some uh, areas with fog. 
and we, at 6 UTT, UTC we also can confirm some still some areas with fog patches over here, northern Italy and in the eastern part of Europe. Let's move on. Over Lithuanian, uh, we have uh, uh, this area here, Lithuanian, and we can see that, uh, as I already uh, told, it, this is a warm air that is um, fa falling in front of the, the deep trough and it's reaching uh, the Scandinavia. So uh, we can see uh, some, this is Lithuanian here. So this is uh, more or less, we, I, I don't know if you can see the temperatures, but uh, in fact, we have here some about uh, eight, Four, three, and some nine, eight, eight point five here. So it's not really uh, very cold um, and colder than we have in Lisbon because at six UTC we had some values of ten uh, in north of Portugal and some values of fourteen south of Portugal at six UTC. So it's not really uh, very uh, cold, much colder than in Portugal. And in fact, we have this uh, warm air mass that is coming uh, from the south that is reaching. Um, the northern Scandinavia. So I think it's uh, temperatures that we could expect, but of course uh, maybe uh, Isolde you can add uh, something about this. And you see also uh, many observations of, uh, of fog at 6 UTC in this area. Now let's move uh, again to the west. I want to show you some um, parameters associated to uh, former tropical st uh, storm uh, Raphael. And in this uh, first uh, image, we have the po uh, positive vorticity advection. And you can see here uh, in this area here, uh, associated with also with the, this brownish, uh, brownish uh, colors in the RGB uh, with the potential vorticity anomaly and the dry intrusion you can see in the water vapor. So uh, very um, ac activity, it's, it's very intense in this area. Also you can see here the temperature advection and we still have two areas of interest that uh, are associated with this one to tropical, uh, former tropical cyclone Raphael and this area, the frontal cold front, it's very active that came from the uh, North America and that somehow uh, Raphael was merged by it. So we have uh, two uh, situations very active uh, in this uh, weather system. And of course we have, have here the maximum wind at 300 and you can see the sharp uh, the dry zone, uh, black, and the, the moist over here and still over here and it's a uh, very sharp boundary. And also you can confirm in the RGB, um, air mass RGB, that it's very sharp. Uh, so we have two areas, distinctive, distinctive areas um, uh, in this region. Finally, I want to show some nice uh, s lee clouds over uh, Pyrenees, over Iberi Iberia, and of course we have uh, some uh, cl similar cloudiness over uh, UK. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this is uh, what this could be. Let's see if someone has some something to add. So we have uh, this picture is about the orography of uh, northern part of UK and in Scotland we have uh, in fact very high mountains and uh, it could be also lee clouds but it's further uh, in the over the, the sea so 
I'm not quite sure. It could be also from um, uh, high, highly cloudiness associated to the jet. But uh, in this case, uh, it should be on this side. So this uh, highly uh, cloudiness uh, associated to jet, it normally is on the uh, anticyclonic sides of the jet. Uh, so this one is on in the wrong side. So maybe uh, it's not leak cloudiness. Uh, maybe someone has something to add. I don't know. Okay, we have a question here from Renato. Uh, in the air mass, could the cloud band from to France be a warm conveyor belt? Okay, let's see. You were talking about this. Yes, it's a warm conveyor belt, or uh, it could be uh, thickness free cloudiness uh, associated because this air mass here over this region here and then following north is very unstable. So it could be also thickness rich cloudiness uh, with some. Um, could be some uh, thunderstorms or uh, some activity associated to this. Okay, so uh, it could be called a uh, conveyor belt uh, in the north. Yes, thank you Isolde for this uh, information. Well, um, maybe at the end we can add uh, more comments and questions. Let's start. Uh, I'm going to pass to Tatiana. Uh, Please, Tatiana, uh, you can start. Hello, everybody, everywhere over Europe. Uh, warm regards from Belgrade. My name is Tatiana Mesoric, and I would like to share our experience about the last summer season and the event on the 2nd October this year, mainly focused on the Balkans and uh, Serbia. The, the next slide, uh, I want to, I'm going to continue uh, with the previous uh, vessel weather briefing, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, general feedback from the participants uh, uh, about uh, uh, his uh, question uh, about the summer season. And uh, if you look at in, uh, uh, looking at the charts on the left or or uh, left, uh, looking on this chart. Uh, you, uh, we can see that uh, that um, uh, in a uh, in down chart, just a second, <laughs> over the southern part of Europe, uh, according to UMFN community, um, the last summer season was drier and war warmer than uh, average. Uh, if I focus on uh, Serbia, uh, summer season was uh, extremely hot and dry. You can see the, 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 an example of what is relatively uh, air mass uh, uh, image. Uh, there are the uh, hot and uh, dry uh, air mass. Uh, this is uh, the date uh, from the middle of our uh, uh, second uh, uh, heat wave, which we had during the summer season. Uh, also, we have, uh, when we look at the fall summer season, we have uh, uh, three. Uh, Three times uh, heat waves, uh, medium summer temperature deviation uh, over Serbia uh, from average uh, value was positive from the fall period and it goes up to five degrees Celsius. Uh, total amount uh, also of uh, summer precipitation was below the average values. As I said, uh, we had three waves and uh, uh, the latest one was in August in the period from 19 to 36. Uh, what else uh, I want to say about uh, the summer season? Uh, uh, you uh, just a second. Um, another slide I, I would like to show you uh, that um, there are snow precipitation of uh, uh, 2nd October, uh, 00 UTC, 
or uh, RGB or um, infrared, uh, I mean, very uh, together with the um, uh, five hundred petropascal. Uh, We lost you, Tatiana. Could you press the lock button again? Aha, do you hear me now better? Yes, yes, please oh, continue. Okay. Ah, sorry, sorry. Okay, the continuing period of the warm summer season actually we uh, had uh, in uh, early autumn uh, uh, from uh, uh, 2030, uh, 23rd uh, September till 2nd October. Uh, uh, also, we had a uh, warm and uh, uh, some a bit humid weather. Also, we uh, we uh, uh, in the early, uh, as I said, early autumn uh, we had. Um, influence of system of high pressure and uh, such an effect weakening of frontal system uh, they passed over Serbia. Southwestern flow, uh, flow uh, brought, uh, brought very hot but dry, uh, dry weather from Africa in each period. Actually did, uh, this period uh, um, last uh, uh, till 2nd October. What was unusual on 2nd October uh, if you look at, uh, at uh, the first, uh, if you look at uh, this chart, we have uh, um, a big uh, or wide uh, uh, low pressure. Uh, this is on 500 pe pe hectopascal. Also, we have a cyclone, cyclone in, a, in, a, in a, a surface pressure. I will show you later uh, over the over the Alps and. The, and uh, in the Western Mediterranean, uh, we have a, a trough axis, and in uh, in um, in over the Balkan uh, weak uh, front, uh, and I think in uh, uh, in front of the front we have a Conway warm Conway belt. This is a, another, also the same zero zero UTC from second October, with the surface low pressure. And uh, also, uh, also you can see over the Balkan uh, uh, cold front, we cold front, uh, and uh, uh, and some low pressure uh, as well. Uh, and, and when we analyze on the second October uh, um, on zero zero UTC, uh, the uh, uh, usual charts with the infrared ten point eight. Uh, then we can see also in uh, in, uh, in uh, another in another charts uh, there uh, there uh, there are instability indexes and you can see the first one is a cape and another is uh, uh, G uh, A I I and uh, also it's a quite good uh, forecast for this uh, day. What is actually unusual for uh, October, 2nd October, is that we have a severe, severe thunderstorm uh, along the Adriatic Sea and, uh, and the Balkan Peninsula. So, in another, uh, another slide, I will show there uh, through, through the day, uh, through the day, uh, 00 UTC, 06, uh, 12, and uh, and 18 watt wave uh, imagery with the um, with the PV units uh, uh, one units with the PV and uh, uh, what I want to say else uh, uh, there's uh, super, uh, superimposed uh, all what wave imagery uh, PV units one and it can be noted the dark types uh, uh, of dry descending stratospheric care. Just a second. This one, uh, stratospheric uh, air over northern Africa, the Central Mediterranean, and Adriatic Sea. Uh, there are uh, very maximum of uh, height of PV1 uh, units uh, coincident with the dark type in the area where uh, convection appear. Uh, we, we uh, I, I will focus on the the area of the Balkan here and. You can see uh, that even in the morning uh, we have 
CB clusters. In the next slide, uh, there are the satrap analysis for the Hero 6 UTC, and uh, you can see uh, the uh, analysis fault front, of course, for Kommelberg, yes, and, uh, and uh, then uh, CB clusters uh, uh, along the coast of Adriatic Sea. Another uh, another RGB uh, subproducts, an RGB product with the uh, infrared uh, uh, 10.8. Uh, uh, they are equivalent thickness than the 0.6 uh, UTC, and uh, and there are the humid uh, no, just a second and uh, no, sorry. Uh, there are uh, there are equivalent thickness, and we can uh, see the the um, the ridge of uh, in uh, in uh, that field. So the uh, ridge with that in that fields, and it it can be the area when you look at it uh, this uh, parameters uh, area for uh, uh, for favorable for convection. When you look at when you look at in another slide, uh, also we have a relative uh, humidity at uh, at uh, at uh, zero six UTC, also and quite well uh, for uh, for forecasting um, some kind of uh, thunderstorm. Yeah. And uh, another is the picture is the total uh, precipitable water, and also there are the value which uh, are uh, which mar which can uh, there are value which is uh, suitable for uh, some kind of convection. Another another slide uh, show vertical uh, okay vertical cross section. There are uh, uh, there are uh, just a second. There I think you can see along the on the on the right side of the slide uh, marked with the yellow. Arrow, there are uh, cross section along the Adriatic coast, and uh, in uh, in um, and in this area you can recognize the front and very humid, uh, humid uh, mass, and unstable. Also, uh, another slide. Uh, it's a potential uh, vorticity. And there are uh, in uh, in a border or uh, in um, a boundary layer, or also in a, in a, in a height of uh, tropical pause, the deformation in potential vorticity also can be uh, some uh, uh, can be sign for thunderstorm. We have uh, another slide. Uh, it's uh, sounding uh, from Zadar in the morning. Uh, also zero uh, zero. Zero, zero, 0 UTC on 2nd October and if you if you look at in, uh, in uh, this part there are uh, there are uh, moisture in a uh, in upper level and also some kind uh, of moisture in uh, in a lower uh, middle atmosphere Uh, and hence infrared, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, we can recognize uh, uh, cold uh, U or V sharp uh, storm over the Adriatic coast at 0, 06 UTC. Uh, actually, from the morning was unstable, and uh, with the, on the pictures uh, under the, the infrared enhanced uh, images image. Uh, you can see that is a water spot over the Arctic coast and uh, near Makarska is the, the place. Uh, during the day, we follow the, the um, unstable air mass and convective uh, systems on cells uh, from the from the Bosnia and uh, um, strong convection, uh, uh, strong convection move from the Bosnia to the north east and to uh, to north part of uh, of Serbia 
Of course, that that, uh, that is con that connective uh, develop development uh, is unusual for the the second October. On the left, on the on the right side, uh, you can see estimated uh, uh, um, amount of precipitation. It's uh, 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 according to the radar from Krisha. Uh, it's uh, about 100 millimeters for uh, just one hour. In the next uh, slide, uh, we we uh, uh, I show you that, uh, that the, uh, there are. Uh, uh, 800 lightings uh, uh, during, uh, that, uh, during that uh, morning. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, uh, there, uh, I, I suppose you heard me, 800, uh, 800 lightning uh, uh, between uh, 11 and, uh, and 12 UTC uh, that day. Uh, sorry, we don't have lightning over, or we did, didn't collect uh, lightning over Serbia in that time. Another uh, another um, um, another slide. Uh, you can see the high resolution, high resolution uh, visible channel, and uh, also there are convective cells here with almost uh, with the uh, overshooting tops. Okay, another slide. Uh, I will show you there the, the vertical cross section along the almost uh, river Danube. Uh, you uh, you will see uh, with the marked with the um, with the black arrow, and this is that cross section uh, almost on the border between Bosnia and uh, and uh, Serbia. And what we realize or uh, potential potential we're talking potential vorticity here, and uh, uh, there are uh, another, it's a, it's a front or, uh, um, yes, front uh, uh, around, the, around the border. So back to the radar images, uh, there are radar from, uh, from Serbia and uh, uh, also uh, you can see that uh, in the, the west part of Serbia there are um, there are uh, strong cells uh, develop of the western Serbia and uh, uh, radar show high reflexivity up to the 60 uh, dBZ and cloud tops uh, uh, and cloud tops over 15 kilometers you can see uh, up and on the right side. Um, a lot of hay wa was recorded uh, along uh, this patch. It moves to, to it moves to north east. Two uh, two hours later, two hours later, we uh, we had uh, uh, another uh, we can call it uh, super cells over the north uh, part of Serbia, between the border from, uh, between, uh, on the border between the Hungarian and, uh, and uh, Serbia. Um, the, cell, uh, the cells had uh, all the characteristics of super cells and uh, in, the, in the core of the cells, uh, reflexivity is again uh, around the uh, sixth uh, uh, dBZ. Also, the tops of these cells was uh, up to uh, 15, around 15 uh, kilometers. It lasted uh, more than uh, 30 minutes, and hail in the size of a uh, wall uh, not, uh, is very strong, uh, and also very strong wind. So I will, sh I, I will show you uh, about another connected cells on the northern part of, and you can see that it, it's moved to northeast. Um, there are the the also high, resu uh, high resolution visibility images and uh, uh, and there are the system which is moved to northeast on the the, the, the picture on the right corner down uh, you can see the hail which we had on on that time oh no 
sorry you can see also on this uh, our maps uh, the amount of precipitation but uh, they are not they are not their actually amount uh, we see the the most uh, amount uh, 14 but uh, it's only uh, over the station between station we had uh, uh, amount uh, a lot of amount of precipitation on the right uh, side uh, of slide uh, you can see uh, you can see there are the report from the hail suspension station uh, in Serbia they are, they marked the uh, hail in uh, this period that that period thank you now we are uh, passing to Nunu. Uh, Nunu uh, he is going to talk about some past weather also uh, that we have uh, over the Atlantic. Nunu, it's your turn now. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you Angela. Thank you Tatiana. I will just show you a couple of slides very briefly. Uh, it's uh, This slide is about Nadine uh, tropical storm I'm sure you heard of it uh, let let me just confirm if you remember this you just click yes I'm sure I'll have what some yeses on the Nadine tropical storm over the Atlantic of course <laughs> and the Amatino is laughing because it affected the Azores of course so this, this, this was a very long tropical storm it lasted for 21.28 25 21 days as a tropical storm 21 almost 22 days as a tropical cyclone which includes the tropical depression you see here the the trajectory of it it was very regular so you can it was always tricking playing playing games with us in terms of forecasts uh, it started in, on the 11th of september and it only finished on the 4th of october uh, the maximum intensity was the hurricane 1 for just a couple of just around five days and here I just chosen the the passes uh, of Ascat and overlaid with the water vapor image on the 19th uh, of September here at around midday more to the end of the day here and then uh, on the 20th on the next day and you see very clearly the, the the structure of the cyclone with the water vapor image which gives you information of the upper and medium medium levels and with the ascat wind overlaid you can have information from well the surface and you see the red here of course i'm not giving going to detail but the stronger winds here in red uh, in this case the strongest are more to the north of the system and very close to the islands of the azores so more affecting the the western group uh, at this phase and central group. Uh, here in the last one you can see a very clear, uh, very clearly winds around 50 knots and some change here on wind speed and, and little uh, direction so some structure being found here at the surface. Uh, in fact it affected the, the Azores more than once. This was the first time between the 19th and 20th of September but also later on when it was on the end uh, of its life cycle on the 4th of October and taking into, into account that last uh, August we had also uh, a tropical storm uh, another tropical storm Gordon uh, it was also quite an unusual situation to have Azores being uh, hit let's say three times by uh, a tropical storm in one season only so something uh, Tatiana was mentioning about the, the, the weather in the summer and so high, uh, warm and, and drier there. So this part of the Atlantic was kind of quite an unusual. Just also to, to mention that uh, the National Hurricane Center uh, had to do 88 advisories on this. Uh, just to show you an example, this is something that uh, Diamantino may, of course, may, may, may want to comment about this in the text chat perhaps. Uh, it, it was a picture he sent me <laughs> on his, this uh, old sta the, the station, the uh, that uh, is upside down and not uh, two meters high. Um, just some data here um, on wind. The first uh, e event was with, let's say, higher wind speeds, 100 kilometers of mean wind, 130 of gusts. In the second one, we just have 62 of mean wind and 90 kilometers of, uh, per hour of gusts. And the rainfall uh, was pretty high in the first case too. Not so much here in the second case. Um, this was just for summary. Uh, um, so uh, just to let you um, know a little more on, on Nadine, this very unusual 
annual tropical cyclone. In fact, it was the, the second longest tropical cyclone uh, on record, um, a tropical storm, that's the way. It was the fifth long tropical cyclone, but the, the second tropical storm. Um, so quite unusual too. And so I guess um, this is just from my side. Thank you all. I uh, hope uh, you have enjoyed and uh, see you next month.